cult of personality, the cult of personality, the cult of personality. Cool. Welcome to the Cult of Personality podcast, hosted by yours truly, Mikey McChapa. And welcome back. I guess we were kind of like on a mid-season break. It wasn't intentional. I've been very busy with work. I've been working these overnights, and they've been kicking my ass. But we're back, and we're here with a guest. A new face, someone that I'm not too familiar with. Dead, right? Or is it I am dead? What do you go by? Dead, D3AD, period. Hell yeah. Welcome, man. How are you doing today? Welcome to the pod. Welcome to the show. I'm great. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm excited. I think this is episode... I like to acknowledge just to keep track. I think this is episode six. Yeah, I think this is episode six. So that's cool, man. Season four, episode six. Welcome. I'm glad to see you're doing well. Will you, we, this is the first time that we've had someone... Well, no, not the first time because we had Warren K and he had a mask or whatever. But this is like one of the rare times that we've had someone kind of like with a theme or a gimmick with this like uh, mask you got going on here. And so I'm very excited off rip for this interview for the sake of returning to interviewing and for the sake of finding out who you are, my friend. So hell yeah. That's Welcome up, to the Cult of Personality it. podcast. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. You told me that you found the pod through Lone Dover. How, how do you know Lone Dover, a.k.a. now Private's Funeral? Shout out Private Funeral. So I had a buddy, and his name was Abel. And he knew that I – so this is like back when I was in freshman year, dude. Like, I'm graduated now. Yeah, oh yeah. Congratulations. He goes, he goes, oh, my God, have you heard of this guy named Lone Dover? Have you heard of this guy named Lone Dover, dude? Like, I love this guy. I kept hearing about him for weeks. I was like – Okay, well, are you going to introduce me to him? He goes, well, you got to download Discord. I didn't even know what that was. So I had <laughs> Yo, to download- dead ass. And then I get on there, and, I mean, I met them all, and pretty solid people. I fuck with all of them. They make great music. You know, Matthew, the artist, Lone Dova, uh, well, private funerals now. But all those people, I fuck with all of them. They're cool. Hell, yeah. Um, Are you a part of the Eden's Haven Discord or whatever, that private funeral host? I'm not sure. I don't know if I am or not. I haven't been on Discord in a minute. Yeah, bro. It's so funny that you're like, yeah, I didn't even know what Discord was. And this motherfucker made me download it because I stopped using Discord for such a long time. And the reason why I came back to it was because of pretty much because of him, because he like started this like underground server. And I was like, I fuck with this heavy, you know, every once in a while, like I'll pop on there and I'll throw some promo on there. But I don't like I don't talk to nobody or nothing. So I don't know. And I have like a million different servers on there. Yeah. So I just I don't pay no attention to it really, but it blows up my phone. I'll be getting like five hundred notifications. Yeah, bro. I had to like mute like half of my chats that I'm a part of because if I left all of them on, bro, like I have like one full of people sending memes. One I'm a part of a cooking Discord because I wanted to find out a recipe one time. There right. was a fucking oh with a bunch of shit. I'm a part of like two underground music ones. It's funny. So if it's it, it's weird. I don't know. I I always thought it was weird to be a part of like those forum apps. I thought it was like 4chan or some shit, you know, before I had it. Yeah. I, I think that's just because of meme culture and the way they just represent it. Yeah, it's like not, it's not really that bad, honestly. No, not at all. Every time you hear the word Discord or you hear Discord, like it just has a bad rap. Like when I told my girl that I had Discord, bro. Like she, like she was like, isn't there like fucking like creeps and like shit on there because of like the Discord like kittens and like mods and yeah. shit, or whatever. I'm like, no, bro. I just talk about music with my friends. Like, there's no creep shit going on this fucking app. At like a certain point, I remember it was it was sophomore year, freshman and sophomore year. Like when I got introduced to them, I would literally get on Discord with them like every fucking day, like every single day. That's what's up. So how? How was that? Like, what were you guys just doing? Just talking music and shit? Well, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that, like, back then, my music was definitely not up to par with what it is now. And they were all just giving me advice and helping me. And uh, I got to thank them because, for real, if it weren't for them, I wouldn't be up to the where I'm to where I'm at right now. Hell yeah, they, bro. They, they helped nurture my style and they helped make me into the artist I am today. All of them. Dirty Haven, uh, Lone Dova, well, Private Funerals, I'm sorry. 
Hey, uh, shout out. Shout out Dirty Haven, bro. That's a name I, I haven't heard in a while, but he's bro, been I, or they've been a they've been a supporter for a long time, bro. He just I don't know what happened to him. He disappeared for a little bit and then he dropped a song out of nowhere. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah, they dropped that was they, it. I, they're cool, bro. They're cool as fuck, bro. Shout out Dirty Haven. They I, I talk to wrestling with them a lot because well, like I'm a I'm a fucking wrestling fan since I was young, and yep. we've we, we've talked wrestling, and they also had like a song. They had a song that I like about a wrestler or some shit back in like a couple fucking like probably like a year or two ago, and um, Thank you. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's okay. And so that was cool. I just shout out them because you mentioned their name, and I thought that was fucking sick because I haven't heard about them in a while. I have a song with them. I guess I don't know his or. or pronouns i don't know um i guess it's them uh i have a song with them called uh jo- what is it who's the who's the football player bro i don't watch football is it joe something oh joe burrow joe burrow yeah joe burrow he made a song called joe burrow and put me on it and uh yeah he had a song like that as well like that was like something it was something similar to that but it was for a wrestler like he did the same thing yeah and i was just like i my thing is, is I don't watch any sports other than blood sport, which is like UFC and boxing. So I'm yeah. like, everybody's like, you don't know who Joe Burrow is? And I'm like, no, I don't know who Joe Burrow is. I'm sorry. I can't yeah. help. I, I mean, I, I feel you. I'm not a football or hockey fan or anything like that. Like I do baseball here and there. And really, I'm just a wrestling fan. And like, I'm a little tapped into UFC, but that's only because like, when you're on like Twitter and shit, like wrestling Twitter, like a lot of like other combat sport shit pops up. So I'm like right. tied in by 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 like close affiliation. Facts, cause like I like my buddy G Baby. He uh he makes music with me. He's uh so we're all like a little collective, forever numb. And there's seven of us right now. And uh, oh, it's, yeah. it's me, me, G Baby. Aku, Linjutsi, Sean, but he's not, he doesn't have an artist name or anything yet because I'm trying to teach him. He, uh, he's a little new and there's nothing wrong with that. He showed me some of the stuff he's made and I'm like, okay, this can go somewhere, but I got to teach him some more before I even bring him out into the light. So there's several members we got right now. There's Sean, there's Aiden, and there's Adam, and they're all brand new. And yeah. I'm not really bringing them, I'm not really bringing them into the light because, like, don't get me wrong, the stuff they've recorded isn't bad. But you know what I mean. I'm ch- I'm kind of doing what Lone Dover and them did to me that I'm doing to them. Yeah, I mean, as artists, I think we kind of, as artists, as collaborators, being in the same space or a similar vicinity, even if it's not physically, even if it's just creatively, I think we're supposed to encourage each other to evolve as artists and and you know, like continue to right uh, progress, you know, with what we want our visions to be. So it's cool, you know, rather, even if it's not even like, like, however you look at it, either if you look at it as like taking someone under your wing and like a master student or like a student student or anything, or if you look at it as a mutual exchange, which is how personally I view it, I think it's really fucking dope. And that's cool that, you know, you had this effect onto you from others and you can pass it down onto others, you know, like continue the cycle right. of motivation. Absolutely. And uh, so G baby, uh, He's very big into football, so that's why I mentioned him. He fucking loves football, and he always like he's always gets on me. He's like, "You gotta watch this football game with me. You gotta watch this football game with me." I'm like, "Dude, I'm 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 not into that." But out of the five, uh, there's seven members. I think no, there's eight members actually. Jesus Christ, there's too many. Um, we got me, G Baby, which were the founders. We founded this group in 2021. We didn't get any new members until like 2023. Yeah, then we got so Landon. You guys, you guys were riding Dolo for a while. Yeah, and then we got Landon on, which Landon is like kind of like I don't I don't know. He's an auto tune guy, but he's really fucking cool. I fuck with him. And then Michael Bata, he's a hyper pop artist, and we got him in there. And then hey, we got up? we got Aku, and Aku is like a he's a pop singer. There's all kinds of different shit in this group. It's it's pretty fucked up, but it's pretty cool at the same time. Oh yeah, bro. There's a really cool like hyper pop scene over in New York. And so that's really cool to hear, like for that one dude that you mentioned. But 
with the collective in general, it's cool that number one, you guys have like a variety because that's always like that's something I always praise on the pod is like variety and having multiple influences and just being well overall rounded as an artist with music or whatever your craft is, you know, your inspirations. Um, beyond that, I wanted to know, like, before we get into like the meat and cheese of the interview, how did you get into this collective? Well, you're saying you're a founder, so that's cool. Yeah. Oh, so, so you're kind of explaining it already, you know? I lived I in North I won't, Carolina. I won't interrupt. Continue. Oh, you're good. You're okay. <laughs> All good. So I lived in Ohio for a while and Indiana for a while. I ended up moving to North Carolina. I'm from Cincinnati. And, how, is uh, it, how does it feel to have your home state be like an internet meme? Uh... It's fucking, it, 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 it's a struggle, you know? <laughs> it's like, yo, bro's from fucking Ohio, bro. It's funny as shit, but sometimes I get those people, like, when I post a promo on TikTok, they're like, bro, you're from Ohio, fuck you. And I'm like, listen here, son of a bitch. Bro, I mean, I'm no, I, I'm no better. When you tell people you're from the Bronx, people are like, only in the Bronx, only in the Bronx, in the crackheads, Bronx. New York crackheads, but, oh, uh, bing bong. Bing bong, right. what is you talking about? So, you know, like, it's it's funny, like, it's funny to relate on that level. So I had, I was in North Carolina for three years because my brother was stationed down there for the military. Shout out your brother. Hell yeah. For real. And uh, so I get down there and I'm like, by the time I got down there, I was 13 years old. And like, I, since I was a really young kid, I always knew I was like, I, I wanted to do music. And so I had started like writing my own raps and shit. When I was like nine, 10 years old. And uh, I got down there and I started just making little demos on my fucking phone, like an LG. Yeah. And eventually, a couple years into it, I met this kid named Abel and this kid named Juan. And Abel was Rin and Juan was never beloved. So I set up our own little clique. It was called Rage Records. And we did that for a while, but then was I, it was it a I'm sorry, not to interrupt. Was it more of a was it a, meant to be a collective or was it meant to be a label? A collective that runs as a label. So it's the same like thing. Like some Y like YSL type shit. Yeah, like we're yeah. Forever Numb is the same thing. It's a collective that runs as a label. So okay. anything that my artists drop, they have to clear with me first, which is fine because most of the time I'll clear it anyways. I don't care. Okay. I get it. So it's like a collective, but like you guys are a little more like higher, higher goal, like hierarchy driven. Like, yeah, I, I get it. I see now it, it, it's I get it. I get it. It's more like a, it's more ran. It's more ran like a business, I guess. Right. Like with the label, like aspect yeah. of it. OK, continue. And we do we do shows and stuff. But OK, so North Carolina, that happened. I ended up having to move away, move back, actually back to Ohio, which is crazy. Because I was, you know what I mean? I'm 16 hours away. Now I'm going right back. So oh, yeah. I, went right, I went right back and everything with that ended up falling apart. I got into a fallout with a uh, some girl and it ended up me and all them like just stopped talking to each other for a while. And we're still friends and shit. Like we still talk every once in a while. But it mm -hmm. feels like ever since that, it hasn't really been the same. And that's okay. You know, things like that happen sometimes. Right. And so I ended up coming back to Ohio and... I have a childhood best friend that's Gavin, G Baby. Shout out and, G Baby. Uh, I've known him since we were in diapers. So he decided he was like, bro, he was like, I haven't seen you, bro. Like, because he hadn't seen me in a while either. Obviously, I've been gone. Mm -hmm. He goes, I ain't seen you in a couple years, bro. Let's link up. Let's link up. He comes to my house and I bought a beat off YouTube and he recorded his old McDonald freestyle on it. And I was like, okay. I was like, this is the person. I was like, this is the person I need. Is that like an infamous freestyle amongst you guys? Like, is that did it do well? It did pretty well, and it's a decent song, but it's 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 nothing compared to his album. He dropped an album not too long ago. I'm incredibly fucking proud of him. Uh, I mixed and mastered the whole thing. That's what's up. That's but, what's uh, up. looking so out for the homies. Linked with him, and then we didn't start anything. We did at first. We actually did a like a like a rap duo. We did Grim, and. Uh, we abandoned that completely. We were like, okay, we're done with that. We don't want that. And I was like, I want a team of people. Like, I want a whole team. He's like, well, dude, let's just see. I was like, because I, I seen that Lone Dover. Like, shout out Lone Dover. Well, I keep saying Lone Dover. It's hard shout out to. Private's fucking funeral. Hell yeah. Right, man. Private funeral. I keep saying Lone Dover. It's hard not to when I've known him as Lone Dover for so long. You know no, what I, mean? I feel you. I, it took me a while to adjust to his name, too. 
So, but shout out private funeral. I seen the way he ran things and I got kind of inspired. And I was like, I was like, yo, I was like, I need, I need to do something like this. Cause like what he's doing is definitely like, cause I've seen it, not just him. Atypical issue is another guy. You might know him. He has, I, inter- like, I oh. interviewed him. Hell yeah. And I looked at those guys and I was like, hmm. I was like, they got something going on. And I was like, I should do my own thing. So I did, I did my own little thing and I don't know how they run their stuff. But the way we run is it's it's more of a label than a collective, but it's still a collective. So I give my artists 100 percent creative freedom. They're allowed to do whatever the fuck they want. I don't care what they say or do on a track does not bother me. The only thing is they have to clear it with me first before they drop it. They have to send it to me and be like, hey, can I drop this? I'll listen to it. And literally the only thing I will look for is repeating lyrics. That's it. If there's no repeating lyrics or if it if it sounds like absolute dog shit, which that probably won't happen. So what's the sake, like, I'm a little curious even because, like, this is, like, an approach to music or, like, an ap- or this is, like, a, something I've never heard of on the pod or, like, converse about with a, a creative person. So, like, when it comes to, like, being this, like, overseer or, like, you know, even if it's just, like, this approver, is it for the sake of, like, keeping an image uh, for the, like, label, for the group? Is it for the sake of, like, just keeping people motivated to evolve like so people aren't putting out like low lesser quality work like what's your what's your what's your what's your thing what's your shebang it's more about it's more about image and it's also about quality so we got three new members right now i told you that right adam there's adam aiden and sean they don't even have artist names yet okay adam adam sent me a song that he wrote and he was like hey can i come to your house and record it and i was like okay let's do that he came to my house, recorded with all my shit, and then we dropped it. And I told him, I gave him a go because I was like, this is not like, it was a pretty fucking actually like decently good song. It had a nice hook. Like the verses were okay, but the hook was really fucking nice. So I was like, all right. I was like, you can drop this. So his artist name is just Adam Mace, but he's okay. not really going to get revealed either, honestly. Like Adam, Aiden, and Sean are not going to be revealed on Forever Numb Volume 2, which if you didn't know, we have a mixtape series called Forever Numb. Okay. Which goes with the collective. So is it is it is it kind of like a like a members only thing, like a like a tape? Absolutely. You, that's awesome. So and you guys like continue it on. Like, is it like a year by year thing, or is it whenever you feel like? It, it's whenever we get around to it, and we're working on volume two right now. Okay. Uh, volume one was just me and G Baby because, like I said, for a while we were the only ones in there. Mm-hmm. So here come we're working on volume two and it's almost done but the only people that are on volume two are me landon g baby michael and aku the other three members they're not going to be revealed until volume three and volume three isn't even going to be touched until we have those people up to par so you guys are like developing them like this is like a it's like almost like a developmental thing like yeah and then so g baby's the co-founder so he decided he wanted a protege. He was like, I want a protege because I had a couple and he was like, I want a protege. So he took Adam as his protege and I took Sean and Aiden, I guess. Or Landon, it, I think Landon took Aiden too because we gave Landon some higher power because we fucked with Landon. But Landon took Aiden, I took Sean and Gavin took Adam. So we're all nurturing them and making sure like they get where they need to be. And we just had a studio session not even two days ago pretty lit so that's what like what's going on there oh yeah bro um as far as like hierarchy wise uh me i I would say me and gavin have the most power obviously i i'd say landon has a decent amount and then the rest of them they have power but you know what i mean like they can't dictate anything in the group and that's fine with them like i've talked that over with them I was going to ask, I was like, do you ever face, like, conflict with this? Because I feel like maybe some people might look at this or, like, look at it and, like, I don't know. It depends on how you treat, like, how you are with your art or your music. And some people are, I guess, a little more possessive or a little more, like, over how they release and what they put out and how they want it to sound. And obviously music is subjective. So what you think sounds good, they may sound think sounds bad. And what they think sounds bad, you may think sound good. And, you know. So do you ever, like, I was going to ask if you ever faced conflict with that or, like, yeah. And also, like, hmm, I have a lot of questions about this. Like, 
do you think it could ever be a slippery slope for someone to be able to like take advantage of their power within the label or anything like because i feel like when you have something as roles like a protege and a student like a protege and a leader or a protege and whatever you're a martyr whatever you want to call it uh, uh whatever inspiration like you know it's like it, 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 it there's a dynamic to it there's a power dynamic to it and so obviously when you give one person more power they could take advantage and exploit something with lesser do you ever feel like that's like a fear or a concern with the group so my thing is is as their leader i always want to provide for them so like my manager is the one that gets us the shows and stuff we do shows we travel states mm. and uh like so here soon we're going to michigan in september for a show uh that's awesome we went to ohio indiana we're planning on going to tennessee we want to go to florida there's all kinds of stuff and uh, so you my guys manager, are you guys are venturing like south Oh, we're going everywhere. Oh, yeah. We want to we want to hit the West Coast as well, but we don't. You know how expensive that is. Yeah, I was gonna say you guys. Yeah. Like, I was gonna I was gonna say like come to New York, but I completely stopped myself because New York is is just as expensive. You know. Right. I mean, I could, but it's just uh. So as their leader, I always try to like make sure like I, I fund for them and I help them out, and uh, like I'm not a complete and total douche. Like if they want to drop something and I don't like, let's say it's a style of music. I don't like, like, let's say one of them just decides to make a country song. Okay. That's not my dictation. My dictation is whether or not I think sonically it sounds good, like mixing and mastering wise, if it sounds clean. And my thing is also repeating lyrics. If you have any repeating lyrics, that's literally it. If you have anything like you could say the most outlandish screwed up, fucked up shit. I won't say shit. I won't say a word. <laughs> but it all depends on quality. So, and I'll give you another example. So, uh, so one of my members, Michael, he told me that he had not had a microphone or a laptop. I okay. immediately, I immediately went to work. I went and bought like four fucking microphones because I know other members needed them too. And I okay. fucking, I just, I gave them to him. I was like, here, these are your guys. I was like, use them, use them wisely. They're yours. I fuck with this. This is like uh like a commune almost, you know? Like kind of like, you know, like I we give to who those who need it. So we're all at a good level, you know, rather than hey, we're, this imbalance of yeah. I get that. I fuck with that. We're at family. first, at first I'm not going to lie, I was skeptical. I'm like, yo, he's talking about power and like proteges and shit. I'm like, damn, yeah, no. like I'm like, nah, what? And then you, you explain it and I fuck with you. I fuck with this. You want to talk about power. The only power that I truly have, and G-Baby also has this power, is removing or kicking people out of the group. That's it. Now, it we, has any collective, I, yeah. G-Baby doesn't really take leadership. He, he does sometimes. It depends on what it's about. But most of the time, he hands that shit over to me. And the reason why is because I have more knowledge on how to handle it. Right. And so like, I've always told him, like, if you guys get any fucking any deals, anything, you need to bring them to me immediately. Because I have a manager who knows that stuff legally. He can read that stuff over for us. He can explain it to us because I don't even understand that stuff sometimes. You know oh, yeah, I mean? like fine print and, you know, so people don't get screwed out of a fucking, yeah, I get you. So the thing with that is, is like the only true power that me and G-Baby really have is kicking people out the group or just, you know, obviously being like, okay, you can drop this. That's literally it. There's, I'm not a dick. Like there's no controlling this. <laughs> Bro, um, before we move on and like get into like the first question of the pod, just because I like to keep some sort of loose structure to my very free approach. Um, with the collective, bro, does is is it only like musicians or is there producers? Is there a merch guy? Like, do you guys focus in different fields? Like on some, you know, with mm -hmm. like with it being a label and stuff. Do you know who Low Flyer is? Yes, I, I, I follow him. I think we talked once, but I meant to have him on the pod, but I don't know him too well, but I know of him. I had, I had recruited him as a producer, so he's in the group as okay. a producer. I forgot to, I, that's the one I forgot to mention. There we go. See, I was thinking, I was like, there's somebody I forgot. Loaf. It was Loaf. So Loaf. there's nine characters, not fucking eight. So we continue to climb up the spectrum. More and more. But like. Right. I'll show you. Let me show you this group chat. It is fucking huge. Because this oh, shit yeah. is hilarious. Look at how many people are on this group chat. That's like nine people. One, two, eight people. What? Yeah. Well, eight people excluding me. 
Yeah, so shit. nine people in total, right? Nine. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, and that's cool. The fact that you guys have such a big group and collective, right? Um, it's cool that you guys can manage it and like keep it going, even if it like needs this structure or, or even like even if it needs structure to run or if it doesn't need structure, whatever. The fact that you guys can do it with so many people is cool because every collective I've witnessed and I've seen and I've been a part of, it, it always fails because of like since there's so many people, there's so many different people with different approaches to music and creative shit and so passionate about what they're creating. It's like so easy for everyone to like just bash heads and like completely right. not see eye to eye, you know? Uh, that That's something that I... I've always been grateful about with this collective is, is that we have like, I'm going to be honest. I, I picked the right people. We have perfect communication with each other. When we make songs together, like we're like, are you comfortable with this? Like, are you comfortable with this? Are you comfortable with that? Like we sit there and talk to each other. Like, hey, like, what if we did this? We maturely talk about our problems too. If we ever like get into a little tussle, which we haven't yet, but like, if we ever get like a little frustrated with each other, like one time I was in the stew and they seemed pretty frustrated that I kept putting a bunch of layers and I was like, I was like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying. They're like, dude, you're okay. We're just like, we really want to record our song. And I'm like, okay. I was like, I'll try to get it done. You know what I mean? Like, it's very simple. It's very wholesome. And we just, we love each other. It's great. Hell yeah. That's beautiful, and, uh, man. So the three members that aren't being revealed, one of them is probably his song, the Adam Ace. His song is going to be the last track on Forever Numb Volume 2. So he's the only new one that's getting introduced on Volume 2. And the reason why is because I've worked with him longer than I've worked with Sean and Aiden. Hell yeah. Um, Sean needs to, he wants to do like trap metal. And so I told him, and I heard his voice. Like he actually, the other day I hung out with him and he's not bad. So I told him, I was like, dude, come over. We'll work on some stuff. So he should be coming over sometime this week and we'll see. And then Hell Aiden, yeah. uh, so Adam got taken by G baby. So I'm not, I'm not nurturing him no more. I guess G baby is, but, uh, Landon took Aiden. So I took Sean and, uh, Aiden and Sean are not being revealed until volume three. Nice, man. Nice. So that's man. This is so crazy, bro. This is like crazy. This is, I've never heard of anything like this before. And I know like, I'm probably just like stupid and that this is definitely like people have developmental like groups and labels that work just like this. But I've never witnessed a collective or a, a group or a label that works like this. And I just think it's really cool because, like, I don't know, like, how everyone works over here and how people kind of work in my, like, from what I've seen on the Internet, like, my warp perception is, like, very Wild West, very, like, root right. and in. We're all putting our own shit out. Fuck you. Like, Dude, I fuck I'm, with it. I you fuck know? With it. But, That's like, what I'm saying. Like, very, like, punk almost, too. Like, especially, like, in the New York scene or whatever. Like, everyone carries themselves, like, very uh, brash and bold and loud. You know? It's, like, how it is. So, it, but also, like, very, like, anarchy type shit, you know? So, like, the fact that you have, like, this this structure, but you could bring people up and have people develop as artists. Like, I didn't have that shit. You know how I developed as an artist? Like, it was me, my room, my computer, and YouTube. Like, and, and right. like... Like, you know, so like the fact that people can have this like outlet to go to that you provide is really cool, man. I respect right. it a lot. When I first uh, when I first met Private Funeral, that's like that's like what how I felt. They were like at first I was a little asshole because I was an immature ass kid. And I was like, ah, I couldn't take criticism when I was a kid, bro. I fuck, I used to fight motherfuckers over that shit. I <laughs> middle always swinging, bro. If someone told me to fix something, I'd be like, bitch. So. We would argue all the fucking time. But I will say this. I took his advice. I took their advice. And I ended out being who I am today. A lot of people love my music. So I got to give props to them, man. Shout out Lone Dover. Shout out Lone Dover. Private Funeral. Shout out who else? Matthew, Matthew, all of them, bro. Like, they Matt, all, they Matt the Artist. I'm Matt the Artist, bro. Matt, the artist, caught me by surprise. He was a cool dude. When I interviewed him, bro just casually told me that he had a verse from Rick Ross and right. that he had a kid. And I was like, yo, bro, this is crazy. He had a verse like, from Young Buck one time. I was like, where the fuck did you get a verse from Young Buck? I was like, what? Yeah, bro. I think you when, ended, what? Like we, ended, we ended up talking about it and he told me it was like, it's like one of, I don't know, I guess like uh, one of those like verses like that you buy. But like it's like the a pre-recorded verse. 
I get I forgot how he told me all about it on the Discord. I forgot how it worked. But it was some shit. But it was still caught me by such a fucking surprise, you know? It's like Rick uh, Ross. I love Rick Ross. Stay scheming is always on repeat in my career, bro. I fucking love Rick Ross. He gets some crazy ass connections. Uh one time I I may or may not be wrong, but I'm pretty sure one time he told me he talked a little darky, and I was like, huh? Bro, you'd be surprised, bro. Making like those connections and talking to these artists is like so much easier than you think, right. bro. Even if it's just shooting a DM. I, was say, I had uh, Ronnie J. I I put I, I tagged Ronnie J. in my story, and I was like, I need a beat from Ronnie J. And the motherfucker ignored me. Oh yeah, Fuck bro. You, you, know, Ronnie J. You, you know how many people probably ask Ronnie, tag Ronnie J. in a story or DM Ronnie J. Like, yo, check right. out my music. Yo, here's my email. I need a beat. Ronnie J's like, yo, what the fuck? Right. Like, I I done work with probably, X like, and shit. Like. I wasn't upset. I was just like, bro, he probably looked at my story and was like, really, dude? Like, you know what I mean? Hell it yeah, just bro. happens. I feel like a lot of those guys, when they get tagged and shit like that, they just look at it. They don't really respond. They're just like, what is this? You know what I mean? Hell yeah, bro. I mean, even like, bro, when you're just like in like, when you're in a position like that where you're constantly moving because like, it's how you make money and shit, like just making music and shit. You don't, you look at an Instagram story for a split second and you move on and you keep doing what you're doing type right. shit. I can only imagine. These motherfuckers be busy out here, bro. Right. Hell yeah. Um, fuck. What was I gonna ask? I feel like I have one more question. Give me a second. Collective, collective. Oh, what was your collective name? One more time, just to like really stamp it in there. Forever numb. Uh, it has a period at the end, and so you see my name. It's spelled with a period at the end too. Hell yeah. That's to signify my leadership. That's literally all it is. The period. It's just to signify the leadership. Signify the leadership. So before we move on from this secretly, you are not like a control freak cult leader or anything, right? Fuck no. Hell no. Right. They do what they want. All right. All right. Those cool. are my children. YSL shit. No, I fuck with you, bro. I fuck with you heavy, bro. I think that's so sick. Um, Oh, damn. I'm like, damn. Hopefully I'm not like giving mad gain to my microphone right now. But um, now we kind of move away from the collective questions, even though I might come back to it down the line if I have more. But moving right. away from that and moving towards structure, moving towards the meat and cheese of the podcast. Um, and now we focus more on you as an individual, which is dead. The name, the image, the aura, and the energy. How to start? How do we get here? And everything in between. With your name, I have to ask before anything, was there any inspiration from, um, what is it, that one, like, Dutch or Swedish fucking death metal band, uh, Mayhem? You knew something? exactly! You knew exactly, yes! Okay, so, my name partially comes from that, yes. Okay. So, uh, you know Dead, the singer from Mayhem? Yes. He killed himself, and, I don't know, I just sat there and thought about it, I was like, Dead, that's a cool-ass name, I was like, I like that name, I was like, hmm, hmm. Hmm, hmm. I was like, there's no rapper's name dead. And then I was like, okay, but I got to like, I can't just take the name. I got to put my own thing to it. Twist. Yeah. And so I added the three because, well, number one, I'll say this: three has always been a lucky number for me. I'm going to say that right. Fucking if I've had three of something like I'll give an example. The other day I almost got fired because I fell asleep and my manager kept trying to call me to wake me up. This what do you, up. what do you do? I work at White Castle, cuz. All right, all right. White Castle. <laughs> Falling asleep at White Castle is not that bad. It's not like you're like behind heavy machinery. I actually get paid pretty good too. Not not gonna lie, it's actually decent pay. That's what's up. Shout out White Castle. Well, uh, I love White Castle. It is pretty good food. Yeah. What was I saying? Oh, your your manager was trying to wake you up. Yeah, and my things manager come in three. Called, he called me two times and I didn't wake up. He called me the third time. I woke up. It's just like I, every time, like three, something of three, like I had th one time I went to this vape shop and I mm -hmm. bought a vape and I got two vapes free because I filled out my card. So I got three vapes. See what I mean? Bingo. So I put the three in there. Yeah. Or and like then I put the period to signify my leadership of forever now. And then that's it. Oh, yeah, bro. That's it's like your little it. good luck charm. It's like like a three leaf clover. Are you right. Irish? Actually, no. I'm part Native American. Oh shit! What tribe or what? 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 Whatever. I'm gonna be honest. Not sure. Have no clue. It's just what I've been told. 
that's what's up, bro. So it could I be just, true, but not. I just did my fucking ancestry, uh, and I just got my results back like two, three days ago, and I'm like a quarter fucking indigenous Puerto Rican, bro, like native off the island. My so, dad. Cherokee, but you know, you know what I mean about that. Those people, you know, I'm half Cherokee. I'm a native, and then you look at them, and they're like fucking pale. Bro, I went to fucking Utah and look met me. people like that, bro. So, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's true or not. That's just what I've been told my whole life. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm white. <laughs> That's all I know. I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. Bro, you should do an ancestry. I was just talking to my girl about it, and we were like, yo, bro. like, Because being a Hispanic in America, especially when like it comes to like being a Caribbean Hispanic, right. like you, it, you, we got so fucked up from like all the colonization and the slave trade and shit. So like a lot of like our culture of what we were before, like got diluted. And, you know, Puerto Ricans and like Dominicans are a mix of a bunch of different groups of people. White people, bro, like y'all are just from the fucking, you're from Europe, bro. So like, you guys, you, <laughs> you, you guys come up as like fucking like 90% something that's not possible okay. for us i'm like the most i was was 30 percent. like the largest number i had was 30 percent, and it was spaniard because of the spain spain taking over puerto rico i'm like yo bro on the native american stuff i mean the my dad does have dark skin and black hair i will give him that and my brother does too but i don't so like and i have blue eyes too look at these bitches it's probably closer. It's probably closer in your in your gene pool, though, or like in your ancestry than you think. If your dad has features of it, you know, it's probably like not too far up his lineage, right? But uh, like, as far as cultures go, yeah, like a lot of that. Uh, if you're not educated on that, it can get very confusing because there's a lot of different ways that people celebrate things and do things, traditions, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so I understand. I understand what you're saying completely. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. It, it's just it, it's just cool to see like what the makeup is and shit, bro. You guys is just fucking crazy. Right. Anywho, beyond that, moving back to what we were saying, I went on a tangent. You had this like the lucky symbol three, and that's dope. Like I think three is a dope number. Three, seven, twenty-one. Those are all like cool numbers to me. I like the times table of threes. But um, right. <laughs> but that's cool that you integrated that into your name. But also the period. The period to signify leadership is a really cool thing. You kind of have like a, it's like very uh, like a patch of honor, like very militant, you know? Yeah. So forever numb is spelled forever numb, period. There's a period. Yeah, period. I know. You guys have that like quota, that thing, the so, stamp. And the, the thing is, is with like, so we had a member and his name was 32 Hollow. And uh, my only thing with like being in the group is that you're you're active, at least some form of active. Even if you only text the group chat like once a day, and you're like, "Hey guys, what's up?" Right. As long as you're active. And uh, this guy, he was he was working on his mixtape, and I was you know I was in talks with him, and uh, I I don't know I guess he got too big for his britches. He had a song with like 48k, and he just acted like he was too good for everyone. So I kicked him out. I was like, "You're not gonna." act like that around my people you're not going to treat anybody lesser or worse than you just because you have a song with 48k like it's it just doesn't happen with me right and so i've had conflict with having to kick people out before yes Damn, if you yeah. talk about like that wise so yeah i, I don't conflict. that's like like that's such just that's such a that's such a just reason though to kick someone out because i i hate i hate an inflated ego ass motherfucker bro Right. Like, oh my god, that shit's annoying. Like over the stupidest shit, bro. Like forty eight k in your song, and I get trying to act like you're like big shit. Like, fuck out of right. here, kick rocks. So and then, with like the the leader wise shit, like with the with the with the dot. Yeah, that's that's kind of like that's kind of like what that is. Is like it's just to signify leadership. And uh, like when we're at a show, like, like I'll give you an example. My New Haven show, which was months ago, we went up there and these guys watched us perform and. After immediately they start, and it was just me and Gavin that time. It wasn't any other members, but they immediately start going up to Gavin. They ignored me completely. And that's fine. I don't care. Doesn't bother me. But they started trying. They were like, you should come join us. Like, you should get on our team, bro. Like, da 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 da. Nah, I don't play that. I ran up and I was like, really, dude? I was like, no. 
It's like, you're not doing that to my artist. You're not doing that to me. I was like, you can talk to me if you have business inquiries because we're not going to do this. I'm very like yeah. adamant on who, you know what I mean? I'm very adamant on who is on my team and they're going to stay on my team. You know yeah. what I mean? Hell yeah, bro. And if they're on my team, like we eat off the same plate, bro. We're family. We're all family. We eat off the same plate. Like I share my, like these shows that I'm, that I have, they're supposed to be mine, but I share them with them. Like I let them come along. I'm like, y'all perform some of your songs with me, bro. Because oh, yeah. we eat off the same plate, bro. Where they're going, I'm going. Where I'm going, they're going. Either way. That's what's up, bro. I, I feel you. Um, Shit, what was I going to say? With touring, how's that? Like how, how, how have the shows been? When did you start like doing, like dive into that a little. I'm just curious before we continue on into the rest of, because the first question is kind of like four questions in one and with how many tangents we go on and stuff, it ends up just becoming like a giant blurb of conversation. So there's no like real structure to follow if that was a concern and for the audience, you know, for the sake of being clear, but yeah, yeah, man, go into that. How's touring been, how's touring with such a large group been and stuff like that, you know, doing these shows or not touring, but you know, just going around doing different shows and shit. So I mean, I call it touring. I'd be I'd be gone a lot. But uh so I started in November, I think yeah, November of twenty twenty two. And I've so done, that was like that was like right there. I've done like six or I think six or seven shows so far. And uh, you know, each one, like some of them were big, some of them had a lot of people, but a couple of them didn't, and that's okay to me. Because, like, I posted this video that, uh, so we went to this festival not too long ago. It had hell of people, like, tons of artists performing. And there was tons of people there, like, tons. And we were so excited. We were like, dude, this is going to be one of our biggest crowds, bro. This is going to be huge. This is going to be fucking massive. It was, like, easy 150-plus people. I get on stage. The minute I got on stage, it was like, and I can't be mad. It was, like, one in the morning. You know, it was late. I was one of the last artists to perform. And he started walking out. And he started walking out. Yeah. I was like, but I didn't let it get me down. Seven people stayed, seven people stayed. And I was like, all right, we're giving these seven people the best fucking show of their life. And we did, we gave them a pretty goddamn good show. Seven and, uh, people. I That's think all you need. Big... All you need is one. So seven's good. Right. And you know, most of them actually seven is the shortest we've had. Most of them, there's above 30 people easy. Most of the time. Hell yeah, bro. When it was like, Ooh, shit. And then the first one I did, which was by myself. I did my own solo concert. I had over 300 people in that building and we had the building bouncing so fucking hard that the people across the street were like, bro, we were about to call the cops. Do you have a, do you have a big local fan base where you're at or like in a certain or in one area, like one state specifically? See, what's crazy about that is, is it's not in one area specifically. Now there's a lot of people where I'm at right now that fuck with me and love me. Mm-hmm. but there's people like when i used to work at this place called dairy cottage there would be people from indianapolis coming in to see me people from different parts of ohio coming in to see me they'd look at me and they go and i just knew like you know what i mean you just know and That's one time this whole group of high school kids came in and they were like they were yelling at me. they were dead 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 and i was like because i don't work there no more but i i can't i'm not allowed to interact with customers like that right. so I told him, I was like, hey, I was like, guys, I get off at nine o'clock. This was hours before. I was like, guys, I get off at nine o'clock. Like, if you could just meet me after or whatever, I'll do whatever. They actually sat out there and waited hours for me and took pictures with me. Sheesh. And I have the picture. I don't really feel like pulling it up, but hang on. We can't if we like. This motherfucker yeah. could be an Indiana rapper, though. Pissed me off. I'm not from Indiana. Fuck you. <laughs> but uh, know, it was cool as shit, you know, just kids showing love and shit. And uh, that happened. It happens quite often. There's people who come into my work now, like in the middle of the fucking night, coming to see me, and I'm like, "It's that's fucking crazy. three in the morning. You got school. What are you doing, bro? People, that's crazy, bro. I think people it's um, crazy. I think it's cool though. I, I also, think. It... Oh, what's up? Go ahead. I also used to go by a different name, so I changed my name to Dead like a few months ago. I used to go by Slim Guts. Really fucking embarrassing name, but. Slim guts, slim guts, slim guts. S l i m g u t z. Yeah, no, it sounds familiar. That's I'm not I mean. under that name anymore, but I used to be. 
Um, I was for a while up until like five months ago, and that's when I changed it. And the reason I changed it, I think, I think you know why I changed it. Um, I don't know. I mean, besides maybe, name. besides you just not liking liking the name Slim Guts. Pretty much, yeah. It was fucking. It's fucking terrible. I've had that name since I was in like middle school, bro. Yeah, sometimes you just outgrow shit, you know. When I, I was. I needed something new so bad. I was like, I, I need something new. Like, I can't do that anymore. Yeah, when I was in middle school, bro, I used to go by... Or when I was, like, in elementary, bro, like, I wanted to be a YouTuber. Or no, when I was in middle school, yeah, that's when I started. I wanted to be a YouTuber, and I went by, like, M Guns. And then when I was, like, in later in middle school, I went by, like, Papa Miklo. I went through a, a array of aliases just on some, like, little kid shit. So I feel you. If I can find it in the damn camera roll, I'm about to give up. We'll give uh, it another. Not... We'll give it a, a, another five seconds of, of care. <laughs> no, it's a. You know, I, I think that that's cool though. That that people you kind of have this like fan base and this foundation that sets up well for you to do live shows because clearly people are interested enough. Found it. That's me, and that's the kid that took a picture with me. Wow, that's crazy. He brought. He oh, had the receipt. See. Hell yeah, receipt. bro! Fuck, I got nervous here. I was like, shit. They're going to think I'm capping. No, he got it, bro. No, that's cool, though, because what that means is that people want to, like, engage with you and they want to see you in person. That means that you doing live shows is exactly what people want, you know? Oh, yeah. We've had people come out. That There was one guy. He was like, I drove. He's like, I drove three and a half hours to see you. I was like, who the fuck are you? Like, I don't even Where? know you. Holy shit, right? Like, what the fuck? Like, who are you, sir? Where did you come from? So it's just that type shit. Bro, that's fucking sick, though, bro. Like to be it's noticed, lit, to be noticed in the street, or even to be noticed, like you know, by someone who knows someone that you know is cool. So to be noticed by complete strangers, and at work or whatever, even though it put it's funny and like yeah, like oh, you know, I'm at work. It's kind of like some people think it's bothersome, you know, but I think it's sick as fuck. I put this shit on my left nut. I walked into a McDonald's in Bright, Indiana, one time, and they gave me free fries and a drink because they like my music. Swear Damn, to God. bro. Put how, it on my mom. How, what was your tactic? How did you get your name around so well around the area? Because a lot of people I know that do music and shit, or maybe, is it also have to do with the fact that you live, like, in, like, these states that are kind of, like, small town states and stuff? Even though I know Cincinnati's big and, like, stuff like that and, like, those, like, places, but, you know, just because, like, play people I know, like, I don't know. I know people everywhere in Washington and New York and fucking Florida and Georgia, whatever. And people make their music and they have their online fan base, but their local fan base doesn't really exist at all. So how how do you make that come to be? So I'm very loud and outspoken and I've always been like a fuck you kind of guy if you piss me off. Mm -hmm. And so I just I just beef with people. If they say my shit is bad, I'm just like, fuck you, bitch. You know, what I mean, I'm just a dick. And uh ended up this this football player caught the like the word of my music and he ran around the school and showed everybody because i didn't show nobody and then that's how i got one here and then at, from there it just started growing people were coming from different fucking places and i was like where the fuck are all these people coming from like who are you you know what i mean and i wasn't upset at all i was like holy shit like this is cool and uh, i call my fans parasites and it's not a bad thing it just means they feed off of my music my negative energy Hell yeah, but bro. Energy transfer. Like, hell yeah. Um, I also want to ask, going back to the original question for a question combo with the name, the image, the aura, and the energy. With the image, I have to ask, you know, elephant in the room even, what is up with the Hannibal Lecter-inspired studded mask? I've had multiple masks throughout my career, and I change them quite often, but this is probably the one that's going to stay for good. Mm -hmm. um i bought this so okay i had a different one before this and it was like a venom type mask like it was a half mask venom type mask yeah and i was really i was really drunk after a venue and i seen this mask this guy was like hand making mask and i seen this i was like i was like i want it i was like i need it so bad i was like i need it so i ran up to him i was like dude let me get it let me get it let me get it and he's like Thirty dollars, so I hand him thirty dollars, and then I took my other mask, and I was like, "There's a whole video on my Instagram." I'm like, "Y'all see this mask? Fuck this mask!" And I smashed it with my foot, 
And so the thing with the mask is, is so you know who Slipknot is, right? Yes. Uh, always... <laughs> a fun story. My fucking my partner has like the 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 tribal Slipknot logo or whatever on her uh, her elbow. I fuck I, I fuck with Slipknot heavy. Because I love that. the knot, and I've always loved their like their their horror aesthetic and their uh, just like the cool shit they do with their mask. And I was like, hmm. I was like, I want a mask. And I was like, well, MF Doom has a mask, so I, I made my own mask. And my thing with the mask is really just. It has nothing to do specifically with me other than to make me look scary. That's about it. Hell yeah, bro. Um, That's cool that you even like talk about it because I was going to ask, like, what was your inspiration behind it? Because when I was younger, I had my ultra egos and my like gimmicks and stuff like I, uh, but like it wasn't so um like creative and artistical or anything like mine was like more on a comedy basis context because I was doing like Instagram skits and shit when I was like 14. So I would wear like a fucking bucket on my head and some stupid shit. And it was like my little ultra ego. But in a weird way, it was funny because I was inspired by like 21 pilots and shit because of like, I don't know if you ever listened to 21 pilots, but they had like fucking blurry face and shit. And my 13 year old fucking self ate that shit up. Like, like it was fucking right. Uh, as far as 21 pilots, I like most of their stuff. Some of their stuff I'm like, their new but shit sucks. Anything after oh, blurry face, fuck yeah. Anything after blurry face sucked ass. Uh what was that album they had? What was it scaled and icy? That shit yeah. was fucking. Ass. I didn't. Even, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Bro, I didn't even give that shit a listen. That's how you know that shit was ass because the it's last album, long. the last album I tried giving a listen to was the trench or whatever, the one with the bird on it or whatever. And that one's not bad. It's not bad, but I didn't care for it. Like I like that was I was right. like fourteen when it came out, so I was growing out of it and moving on to like SoundCloud and shit, little peep and shit, which is I grew ended up growing out of that kind of in its own way too slightly. And so it's just funny how that shit works. But to bring it back to what I was saying is like even in that like light context or whatever, I found like a deep inspiration to like have that ultra ego and shit. And I know so like in your context, with it being way deeper. Like, I knew there was some sort of inspiration there, you know? So, when I put the mask on, I do say, like, that when I put the mask on, I feel like a whole different person. And that's just, like, my stage persona and shit. And, you so, know, like, when I first... Uh-huh. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go when ahead. I first went on stage, I normally, like, I start aggressive as fuck. I'm like, listen here, you fucking pussies. If you don't fucking jump, if you don't move your motherfucking ass. I'm going to whoop your ass. And they end up moving anyways. It's pretty lit. Hell yeah, bro. With the mask, does any of it have to do with, like, uh, like confidence or maybe, like, having the mask on, like, you know, like, a fear thing or anything of the sort like that? Because I know some people, they put the mask on and because people can't see your face or people put glasses on and since people can't see your eyes, like, they feel more confident and more, you know, uh, brash. So with the mask wise, yeah, it's to hide my face because I don't like my face. Um, and uh, it's also like it, it, it's just like a like a damn that guy looks scary. Like I've had people tell me they're like, "You look scary," and I'm like, "Thank you." Oh yeah, bro! It, like grabs like, atten- oh. it grabs attention. Yeah, it's a it definitely an attention grabber because people don't normally see a rapper or an artist with like a mask anymore. Really, right. well, you do, but you know what I mean, like all older ones. Yeah, I mean, like, MF Doom. Um, I mean, you mentioned Slipknot. How many artists do you see with masks nowadays, though? Other than fucking too. Marshmallow. Oh, yeah, like, all the DJs, Dead Mouse and Marshmallow and shit. But, like, yeah, you don't see it anymore. Where's the anonymous so I, I, music? <laughs> I thought it was a pretty neat benefactor to what it I, is. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, I, I had to ask for sure because, like, I was like, the fact that we got this far in the interview already and we haven't spoken about it, I was like, it's definitely something worth talking about. Like, you know, we're going to go the whole interview. You're wearing the mask and people are like, hmm, I wonder why he's wearing a mask. Like, we just never address it. It's just like, you know, that would be funny. Right. Oh, yeah. Let me put my charger for the laptop. Bang. Charge. There we go. Hell yeah, bro. But um, moving on forth, I wanted to ask. We asked about the name which we got through. We asked about the image we got through. Um, with, with, with you and the collective and stuff, with 
you, you're very you're very strategic so i kind of want to know like what's going on number one i was curious if you guys like do merch and shit because you're like some a guy that like you, you're kind of doing everything and again with the business aspect of the label so like we we kind of address touring and shit so like also like you guys do merch or like what other plans outside of music do you have planned for the label if that's even a better question so what we plan on doing is so landon put out his ep gavin put out his album and then we're trying to get michael to put out his album and aku wants to work on an ep and so we're working on all those right now and then i have my own merch out already we're gonna work on g babies and everyone else's mm -hmm. probably when they get their stuff done and mm -hmm. G Baby put his album out, but he wants to work on his second album already. So I'm going to contact Loaf and we're going to work together on that for beats wise. So he has some beats. And oh, that's, yeah, that's about it. Um, business wise, we got all kinds of shit planned. We meet every month on the 26th. Um, we have a show September 9th, September 22nd and September 29th. We have a show November 18th. We have a show October 6th. We just like, I, consistently am scheduling new things for us to do every day we schedule our uh, our studio meets we meet up often we're like hey like come to this house or come to whoever's house and we all go there and record music or whatever and uh, uh yeah that's we function sick. like we function like a fucking operational building like like we need to have something done you know what i mean yeah, you guys are like running on like clockwork, bro. And with that, I'm like, you guys are, you guys have to be putting out a lot of shit if you guys are working that hard. So that's why I was curious as well. And especially with doing shows and stuff, like I've interviewed friends and guests and stuff, and they've, we've talked about doing shows. And one thing that helps a lot with at shows is merch, you know, for people to like remember and have yeah. in a good image of your you know of you or a good remembrance of you so i was just curious and like that's why i also like specified on merch specifically you know right uh, what about what wise, oh sorry continue i got excited you're good continue merchandise wise i have a, i have a website like a little web thing spring tea set up i need to figure out i want to figure out how to do it like on your own website own own website but i don't know how to do that yet yeah, baby steps, man. You start off, you know, with this and you move forward. Oh, yeah, bro. You have any designs and shit? Or is it kind of just like uh, like very in the works? There's yeah, this. my boy. I yeah. see the beanie. And then there's a... So I call the parasites the parasites, right? But mm -hmm. them as a whole is the parasite hive mind. And so I got the... There's the bomber jackets that it says parasite hive mind right here. And then on the back, it says... Uh, I think it says join or die or something like that. Okay. It's just it's lit. Oh yeah, bro. It, but uh, and then we got I got some merch for my new album that just came out. That came out October eighteenth. I'm not October eighteenth. August eighteenth. Oh, uh, that was just a little. That was soon. That was like six days ago, five days ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I just dropped. I just dropped that record and put some uh put some like uh put a shirt out for it and a couple of hoodies and shit and some hats. Sweet. Yeah, man, that's cool. See, you had this whole little world over here, and that's so sick, right. bro. That's dope. Does it do well, or have you had a lot of people buy, especially with how well rep you have over there? I've had people buy before, and then they've sent me snaps, and they're like, yo, dude, look at this. I'm like... It's surreal. That's, like, all of my reaction, because I'm, like, I'm, like, low-key retarded, bro. Like, <laughs> my reaction to everything that makes me happy is just... The Padres uh, fucking face. So this is like on my link tree. This is what I was talking about. Get all that shit. Hell yeah, bro. Just stuff like that. Bro, and the beanie's and fire. The, I like the, the beanie design. Is I yeah. wear this motherfucker every day. Hell yeah, bro. You got to rep the set. Um, yes, sir. With... We're, well, there's two things I want to talk about. Like, primarily, I want to talk about the album you just dropped in. But also, like, talking about endeavors outside of music and mu music-related shit. Uh, do you do any, like, music videos? Or have you guys done any music videos as, like, a group or uh, yourself individually? Because I eat that shit up. All the cinematic fucking musical shit, man. I just dropped the music video for No Life, which is on my new album. And then we have a video for Back to Back Part 5 coming soon, which is me and G-Baby. We have a series called Back to Back, and it's like mm -hmm. our signature thing. And it's 
it's a uh, it's back to back ciphers. So we have part one, two, three, four, and five now, and nice. uh, we're filming we're filming the video for five. We've Sweet. actually we already filmed it. It just needs to be edited. Edited, yeah. Editing we is rented, a fucking bitch. We we got some guy to let us borrow his white Camaro. Oh well. shit! Yeah, no, nah, hold on. Yeah, you about to be like, what the fuck, dude? You guys should be on a- some. You guys should be on some like white Iverson vibes, like slow mo camera shot, fucking doing donuts, white car, white it's, Iverson. <laughs> it's kind of rough right now, but. There's all kinds of shit that needs to be done to it. That's where that's at. Bro, <laughs> does that sample what 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 is that noise in the beginning? Isn't that like a fucking like TikTok fucking Roblox? Really? That's what that's yeah. from? Yep. Bro, I've heard that shit all over TikTok and I was like, oh, I guess it's like a generic stock, like creepy sound effect, and that shit is a Roblox fucking sound effect, bro. Right. That, that shit is fire. Hilarious. Yo, Every bro, time someone... that's sh- that shit's heat though. Like I, I fuck with videos and stuff, so like that's cool that you also have so. Bro, I'm just hitting them right on the nose. You got a bunch of shit you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah I'm bro. always. Do you ever try to like gatekeep division to like protect it, or is it like something oh, you're open about? Fuck yes, uh, I don't gatekeep it. I just like I protect it at all costs. If anyone tries to make it look stupid, I'm like, listen, bro. You know what I mean? Like I'm just immediately I'm like, I barely I barely talk about shit that I that I want to do, like with right. this like creatively unless like obviously like with my close loved ones, family and friends and shit. But like when it comes to like the public domain, bro, like I'm just so like shh because people are just so weird and people want to fuck up good things so bad and like when right. they see a good idea they want to suckle on it, you know. And like, so with like our ideas, yeah, I, I, I definitely, if you're talking about ideas wise, we definitely gatekeep them. We, we hold those close for like, no, nobody else gets those ideas or ours. Hell yeah. But if it's, if it's like image wise, like if we see someone out there biting our style, we don't really give a fuck. We're like, oh no, yeah, yeah, fuck that. Biters are going to bite no matter what. That means you're doing it right. If you got biters. Trust. Right. Hell yeah. And so that's how that is. Yeah, man. Um, Moving forward. And I'm going to try to keep it snappy because I don't want to take up like, I mean, we're we're at a good pace, but I don't want to take up like too much of your time because I'm like very relaxed, like with my pacing of the pod and we could be here I'm forever. Free all the time <laughs> so I'm free all the time you need. Hell yeah, bro. But moving forward, I want to talk about the album you just dropped. As of today, we're recording this on August 23rd. When this comes out, it'll probably be August, whatever the fuck. So it's, it wasn't too long ago that you dropped this album. And just talk to me about it when it comes to the creative process, when it comes to publishing it, how do you come up with the cover art, you know, everything from beginning to end of like what put what you put into this album. So P project thing. I have a mixtape called Failure. Shout and out I failure. dropped I dropped it when I was in junior year of high school, I think. No junior almost senior. When did you graduate? I graduated early. I graduated in twenty twenty two. Graduate in 2022. When were you meant to graduate? This year? 2023, yeah. Oh, I graduated okay. in December, so it's like half a semester early. Oh, okay. That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. So, so, damn, what what, what year were you born? I'm sorry. I'm like being invasive as fuck. 2004. 2004. Oh, okay, okay. We're not that off. We're not that off. I'm here thinking, I'm like, no, well, you're born like 2006 or some shit right now. Oh, yeah, bro. Right. Continue on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. So, I dropped that mixtape and what that mixtape was about, it was like the last seven months of my life. It was like just each song and it progressively like there's different sections. There's a, so failure one had a, it had the boom bap section, the kind of like trap, like emo, emo rap trap section, the hardcore section, and then the masterpiece. Well, I dropped failure two just August 18th, which is a few days ago. And Failure 2 is also about the last seven months of my life, but it's after high school. So it's like, in total, have you recorded like the last 14 months, considering the thing you recorded in junior year was also capturing? Or was that only applicable to this one, the last seven months thing? That is applicable to both. So I like I work on albums constantly, consistently. Right. I'm right. always dropping something. And uh, so Failure 1 is a mixtape, actually. My debut album is Failure 2, the new one. Okay, that's what's up. That's kind of cool. So 
but there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of similarities to, to Failure One. So uh, Failure One has a song called Today Is Not. There's a lot of sequels. Mm. Failure One has a song called Today Is Not My Day. No life is a sequel to Today Is Not My Day. Nice. Engine and what are nine. what are the themes of these things? Because you're capturing these like seven month periods. And what were you going through in these times? Like, are they more somber toned albums, or were you turned up lit? Like, what was? I don't mean to interrupt or like get ahead it, of the. It's more about like mental turmoil, okay. sort of like just having a break, uh, mental breakdown. That's why the album tends to get more tense as it goes, and then it builds up to like the most tense, and then it shuts off and goes straight to the masterpiece track. Yeah. I guess so. The structure with that is the masterpiece track is only one track and it's the last song on the album. And it basically, it just finishes it all. And so in failure one, there was absolution ecstasy. That song is eight minutes and 13 seconds, eight minutes and 13 seconds. And what does it mostly consist of? Is it all coherent lyrics or is it a lot of instrumental? It, it, there's a lot of instrumental. There's a lot of beat switches. There's lyrics. There's all kinds of shit in it. it. It's fucked up, but it's about a breakup. And so on failure two, I have a girlfriend now. Okay. So on failure two, I made the the masterpiece track. It's called Apple Juice. It's the sequel to Absolution Ecstasy. It's a love song. So you see like the two polar opposites. Oh, okay. And how uh, does, so how does how does she feel about that that parallel? Does she feel? Yeah. Uh, she's aware of like my older uh my my songs that like I like the breakup songs. She does not care. She's cool about it. Like she's chill. She loves that. Actually, she loves my music. Yeah, man. Of course, you know the partners are the biggest supporter. Fucking, my partner fucking blasts like a song I made. I I don't make music that often, so the song I made probably like almost three years ago, two years ago, and it's her favorite song. And she's, big, she's the biggest supporter, so I feel you. Hell yeah, right. bro. And there's uh there's a lot of sequel songs on that album, so uh I'll have to go through the list because you're gonna be like, what? <laughs> Because it's a sequel album. It's got to have some, you know. Yeah, like stuff. there's like, oh, there's like overlaying themes that go from one to another and shit and like connection to correlations and shit. Failure 2 intro is a sequel to the original intro. Trial and Error is a sequel to, uh, what's it called? Uh, That's the Spirit, which is the old, the failure one. No Life is a sequel to Today is Not My Day. Gone Gone is a completely new track. There's no, it's not a sequel. No More is a completely new track. Cynicism 2 is a sequel. Back to Back Part 5 is obviously a sequel. With with these tracks being sequels, do instrumentally or sound-wise, do they sound similar to their predecessor? Similar, but there's still differences and there's still evolution. Mm-hmm. And then Psychosomatic Suicide, that's its own song. Spitting Up Blood, that's its own song. Engine Number 9 is a sequel to My Own Hell. And then Apple Juice is a sequel to Absolution Ecstasy. Okay. So With, there's like there's some newer stuff. There's some newer stories to tell, but there's other ones that I can also further protrude on. And is this your constant like is this your approach to like making music and just is it just in capturing time periods that you're going through or do you plan on like switching it up for the next project or in the future to however to something else whatever you decide decide mm-hmm. In between Failure and Failure 2, there's the Tales of a Broke MC mixtape, and there's the Exploration X mixtape. Exploration X is uh, actually, so Failure 2 is about like how I felt mentally for seven months. Failure 1 is about how I felt mentally for seven months. Exploration X is, it, it's a concept album. Each song is different, and each song represents a different room in my heart. And actually, originally, that mixtape was called Castle of Hearts for that reason but I changed the name to Exploration X for Exploration Unknown. And each room is, each song is supposed to represent a room in my heart. So that's the concept of that one. And then Tales of a Broke MC was just me talking, like talking my shit. Like that's some MC shit, like boom bap, old school rap type shit. Yeah, I was going to say, like, do you switch it up from like a somber vibe to something more turned up or lit or higher paced or whatever the fuck, you know? Oh yeah, I've done all. I've done a metal EP, like a full metal EP, no, no rap, nothing. I've done all kinds of stuff. I, I I always make sure that whenever I do something new, even if it is a sequel, it's always different. Of course, hell yeah, that's dope, man. Um, I I like that you're so thought out and strategic about shit, but also you're really well articulate about 
how all of it went. Like you have it really well documented. I was gonna ask, um, shit, bro. When's your birthday? December twentieth, two thousand four. December twentieth. What are you? A uh, a uh, uh, a Sag? A saggy tits. A Sagittarius. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, man, that's cool, man. Shout out you. That that makes sense with your fucking earlier. You're talking about yeah, bro. I'm just the kind of guy that just fucking. You sound very uh angry in your youth. It makes sense that you're a fire sign. Um, sorry, I, I, I don't like know. I, I don't know if you believe in astrology. I could sound like a fucking total nutcase right now, but like I take I like I think that shit is so consistent all the time. I'm just curious. I'm here listening to your whole thing. I'm like, you know what? Now let me ask what when's his birthday just to see. Right. And so oh, yeah. I do a lot with trap metal as well. Uh, there's a like the trap metal section of Failure One and Failure Two. Uh, I love a lot what? of trap metal. I, I like a lot of that, metal. Where does that influence come from? The or you know what? This is a perfect way to segue into something that I like to ask, which is like inspirations musically. So talk to me about some of your musical inspirations, and you could start off exactly with how you were inspired with the trap metal stuff, and we could segue into other genres. When I was in middle school and like the SoundCloud era started rolling around, bro, dude, fucking uh, X, Triple X, that was like, I was such a fucking fan. I, dude, I love that motherfucker. I still do. And uh, yeah. so he, he's definitely there. And uh, Little Skies, bro, when I first seen Little Skies in middle school, I was like, holy fucking shit. I was like, what is this? I was like, I'm going to do all right, let me ask you something. You so, fuck with Little Skies, right? I fucked yeah. with Little Skies when he came out, and I was like a freshman or a sophomore. I was yeah. a freshman. I was a freshman. And, bro, have you tried listening to his stuff now? Do you feel the same about it as you did then? Eh, some of it, yeah. Some bro, of it not. I, I tried listening to him, bro, like recently to like, because. <laughs> Not to, like, make this a whole other thing. We're going to get back on track, I swear. Yeah. Bro, I I was having a conversation with, with my with my partner about Little Skies. I forgot why, like, exactly. But I was like, yeah, no, he wasn't that bad. Like, I fucked with him when I was in high school or whatever. And and not to, and this is all... I'm so sorry, because I know we're talking about inspirations. I'm not shitting on Little Skies. I think, like, he was cool no, for what it good. was for, like, 2018, you know? But... Bro, and, and like, it was just funny because it was like, I was like, oh, he's not that bad. I go, I put him on and like, listen to him now. And like, it was just very SoundCloud era. Like some things were just very dated in the SoundCloud era. Right. And so like with that, there was people like that. And then I listened to a lot of metal bands. I love death metal, love death core, love new metal, all kinds of shit. So like Linkin Park, that's a new metal band. Slipknot, you could say that's death metal and new metal. It, there's a lot of different things. System uh, of a Down? Actually, no. But uh, Early Bring Me the Horizon, Job for a Cowboy, Suicide Silence, Cattle Decapitator. Just like the, the <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Like the heavy. And yeah. so I always fucked with like the heavy, heavy, heavy shit. And then I like the melodic shit too, though. Don't get me wrong. That shit's fire. Of course, but, a little bit of everything. So I always fucked around with that shit. And so I just, uh, yeah, I just developed it. And I was just like, I wanted to make myself set out from them. I didn't want to be the same as them. So I always, I've always sought to like make my own little style and do my own little thing with things. And so far it's been working out pretty good. Oh yeah. But uh, like inspiration wise, definitely like rock, emo rap, metal rap like old school rap too i love old school rap like 50 cent uh jay kiss uh eminem Damn, bro we're getting old eminem, old school rap, old school rap, rap is him. old school rap is 50 cent now bro do you remember when old school rap was like run dmc and like right run dmc and rock him and shit yeah like old old WM shit bro shit. yo we're getting old bro what the fuck Holy NWA shit. is one of my favorites too. I love NWA. Uh, yeah, you, you just named some good. Like, I'm sorry, not to get distracted. You named some really good influences. I fucking love Jada Kiss. Shout out Jada Kiss, New York legend, 50s dope, oh, yeah, another New York legend. Hell yeah, bro. 
Yeah, bro, man. Um, what's cool with, with your inspirations is like you have a lot of variety, which I always admire. And again, it's something I praise on the pod a lot. And how did you come? Like, how did you find all these different styles and artists and stuff? Like, was it apparent? Was it just having the internet? What was it? It was just uh, having unmonitored access to the internet as a child. Like, <laughs> I really should not have had unmonitored access to the internet, bro. But- I feel you. We were in that generation that just like our parents weren't used to what the internet was fully and they just let us go wild. Right. And it isn't even that. It's like a lot of this shit, like I used to go to this library all the time and just play the computer all day. And I'm like, that's exactly why I know like a lot of this shit I know is because I'd, I'd like, obviously, who's there to monitor me? Nobody. Nobody's obligated to you at the library. Hell yeah. Right. So I'm sitting there chilling. And I'm just like looking at whatever there's a lot of shit I should not have known as a kid that like I know because of that. So it goes off into that. Yeah, bro. That's fucking sick, man. Yeah. And I think that's dope. Like for me, like a lot of early inspirations and like different variety came from like my parents and stuff. Like my mom, like listened to like system of a down, but then she listened to like DMX and stuff like that. And like, I DMX that all fucking best. I love like, DMX that shit all trickled down, you know, and and just so being exposed to that in youth and then having the internet, like you, it's just so dope, but it's so funny. You say like unmonitored internet access, bro. Like that shit's crazy. You know, you know how close I was like falling to the alt-right pop pipeline or whatever the fuck at like 13 years old. Oh dear God. Cause of like commentary YouTubers and shit. Yeah. Do you remember that shit, bro? Fucking I does and leafy and shit, bro. Oh my God. Uh, Dude, when I was in middle school, I was a freak for that shit. Like, fucking Bro. filthy Frank I-dubs and shit. I swear to God, some of the shit I used to say, I, I'd get canceled. I'd get canceled so quick. Uh, you know, it, it, it sucks because, like, once you say, like, oh, yeah, I used to watch these creators, like, you might as well just, you might as well just being like, hey, I've said a slur when I was 13 because. Pretty much, not- yeah. Like, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it's like the fucking terrible truth, but, like, it just sucks so bad. And, like, they still hold a place nostalgically, but it was such a bad time in the internet. It's like, yeah, I was going to say that that really, like, I feel like stuff like that kind of poisoned youth a little bit. <laughs> like, damn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, it really desensitized the youth to issues that we should be sensitive to. I'm just glad that I grew out of it and that we grew out of it. And you right. move past it and you forgive yourself and you move on. You know, you're like, fuck, man. That was yeah, a man, fuck, it's okay. Hell yeah, oh, bro. Do stupid shit when they're kids. It's a part of life, dude. It happens. Yeah, bro. You know, we, nothing worse than like fucking having Call of Duty at like 12 years old in the middle of the night aggressive as fuck getting called the n-word like four million times yeah bro or like you know being called like the f slur or some shit bro word but yeah man fucking being a being yo being being a kid in the fucking weird ass internet age kids understand don't get it now you're fucking born from the vagina with an ipad now in 2023 right you, you come out the cooch with a with a fucking free ipad installed that's what I'm saying. Like, I, dude, I wasn't allowed to have a fucking phone until I was like, what, 15, 16 years old. And then when I did, I had to pay for that. That's appropriate. Own. That's how I'm going to fucking raise my kid. My mom gave me a phone when I was like 10, and she gave me a phone again when I was like 12. Bro, no one deserves, no, you don't need a fucking phone until you're like 15, 14, 15. Right. And I pay for my own data and everything. Yeah, All bro. Kids oh, out yeah. here, be like, yeah. They'd be like, my parents are paying for my car insurance and they're paying for my phone bill. I look at them I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro, <laughs> the like, whole hey, reason, bro. the whole reason why I didn't get a car throughout high school was because my mom refused to like, like, well, not like because my mom refused. It was because car insurance and all that shit is too expensive. And my mom right. was like, hell no, I'm not paying that shit for you or like helping you with it or putting you under my name. So I had no assistance with that. I was like, fuck that, bro. So much money. Dude. So, shout out to you. Kudos to you, bro. Kudos to fucking you, bro. Because to do... But, you know, then again, like... I don't know if you live on your own or with your parents, but, like, bro. Even living alone, like, I thought it was it was so much money. So, imagine, like, living on your own. Like, having to deal with, like, rent and shit. And then also having a car. I live with my dad, but I help him pay rent, so it doesn't Yeah, matter. you know, see, so you have it on both sides. It's just like shit. Because he wants me to, he wants me to stay here. He's uh he's disabled, so I can't I have no other choice. Shout out pops, bro. 
Shout out Pops. But uh oh, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, man. Um now that we touched on influences and stuff or whatever, I think with the amount of time we've taken up. I think I'm going to start like leaning towards the wrap up, but with the wrap up comes a great question and a great opportunity for conversation because I get to ask you if before we start wrapping this up, if there's anything you would like to discuss that I didn't talk about, because at the end of the day, it's your interview, it's your episode. So anything you feel should be discussed or put in here, documented, now is the time to talk about it and hell yeah. Otherwise we continue on. Uh, Let's continue on because I don't, nothing new. Nothing new. Hell yeah, Nothing man. New. I can't reveal I, anything. I, I've I've been in the stew. I've been working on a like a, a full trap metal album, but that's not promised. So Hell yeah. I I wanna ask it's just a random question. What what is a dream collaborator of yours? Like someone you dream to work with one day? Oh my fucking god, there's so many. Uh shit. Oh my fucking god! There's a Fifty Cent, Fifty Cent, uh, Wiz, now. Wiz Khalifa. Yo, Scar- shout out Wiz. Scar Lord. Scar Lord. Slipknot. Bring me the uh, horizon. I know they do like collabs with solo artists and shit. Yeah, you know they're like hell yeah, bro. It's becoming more of a wave because bands aren't as popular anymore. So to stay trendy, they're kind of like doing more collabs with solo artists. So like yeah. it's becoming like really likely like. If you could collab with Slipknot in like 10 years, bro, or, or however amount of time, because I don't even want to limit you, in fucking one year, whatever, that would be so sick, wouldn't it? That shit would be nuts. I do. I, I love me some knot, man. Hell yeah, bro. That kind of shit I want to I want to break into my fucking neighbor's house and just kill them all, you know are what you, I mean? Are you uh, a hardcore punk guy? Punk? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I do fuck with some of that shit. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're like a political guy. I know it's like, it's like uh, uh, a choir taste for some. My thing on the I, I, you're gonna like you're gonna think this is the most interesting take you've ever heard. My thing on politics is is I don't fuck with it. I don't I don't even like in my group like political arguments. I'm not gonna say they're not allowed, but we're like we try our best to avoid them because, because they're they're always intended to divide people. That's what I mean. I don't have a political opinion, and that exact reason is because it just does nothing but make everyone argue and fight. And in my opinion. There's, there's a lot of, like, problems these days with, like, you know, racial issues and stuff. I feel like a lot of that would be much better if we work together rather than fight each other 24-7. You know what I mean? Of course. Especially with the media and stuff. Like, they want you to be divided about these issues. They right. It's very exploited. I was just having the conversation about how, like, all of America's issues come back to, like, classism but they use all of our other real world issues to distract us from the fact that the main issue is classism so like i feel like it more comes back to ignorance and people just like these days nobody wants to hear your opinion they want to yell theirs over yours of course they don't want to give you a fair shot and it's because they're all wrapped up in the fucking game bro like they want you to be they want you to be like arguing and angry about this shit because if we all just realize that it makes them the money. If yeah, exactly, if you just realize that it's the rich white government man that is the problem and not the fucking person to your left or the person to your right that also works a nine to five like you, we are one and That's we are what strong. I'm Hell yeah, bro. So I feel you, bro. I just like and uh, but a lot of hardcore punk sentiments has to do with being even though like I know a lot of it encourages anarchy and that kind of comes with like chaos. It also like encourages community because it has to do with a love for human rights and a love for justice and a love for art and music. So that's why I asked as well as also it's heavier sounding than, you know, it's heavier. And I know you like like more of the metal shit. So, oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think you should give some some shit a listen, like the hardcore punk shit. 100%. But yeah, man, moving forward now, we reached the wrap up of the pod. We are back from a season, a mid-season break. And this was a beautiful, great interview. This was a dope conversation. I'm very happy to have had you on. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to talk to you too, man. Yeah, bro. To give me your time and to have these really in-depth conversations about music, about other topics outside of music. It's what I love to do, but also it takes two to tango. And sometimes people don't have it, the same energy when, when you're in the conversation. But you held up great. 
and you you're you're a dope dude bro i'm excited to see what you do from here on out and i'm glad to have interviewed you and have this documented in time forever right um but yeah now we reach like the wrap up and all like the generic shit which was that you know it goes a little like this you know this was the cult of personality podcast hosted by yours truly mikey mcchapa with me today was dead 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 failure to out now motherfuckers Go failure to out now link in bio to all of dead stuff as well as um forever numb stuff and whatever else he decides to include in the description because i will ask you afterwards and yeah. all that stuff thank you people watching on youtube and listening on spotify soundcloud apple podcast and all that fuck shit thank you for listening for the last hour or so um what else what other cool words happy mikey monday I'm trying my very fucking best to stay consistent with the pod. I'm so sorry for my absence. I felt guilty about it. I know a month isn't that long. You know, all people out there, people are probably working and busy anyway and didn't give a shit. I apologize. We're here. Anywho, dead. Thank you again for coming on, man. I hope it was a no good, problem, enjoyable. Man. I appreciate talking to you. I've seen your podcast. I was like, man, this shit lit. I was like, I gotta get on there. Hell yeah, bro. I hope it was an enjoyable experience. This was one of my uh, favorite or more like 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 likable episodes, you know? Not that I like dislike any of my episodes, but I'm very critical on myself. And so when I feel like I did good in the interview and then also when the other person's encaptured in the conversation, I'm like chef's kiss. So hell yeah, man. Anywho, thank you all for watching. We will see you next week maybe. Thank you again, dead. And peace out.